That person owning properties worth more than 150000 should have to pay the land tax not on the full value above the 150000 but only on 50% of that input value. It is also urgent that the energy pricing and taxation policies pursued by the DLB, which has raped the private sector and has bankrupted almost every household in Barbados, has to be reversed as a matter of urgency. In the course of this coming campaign, we will constructively engage the public on the major new initiatives we will introduce to rescue and stimulate our productive sectors, address the issue of food security, transform the financial industry of Barbados, rehabilitate the Scotland district, revitalize the north, and bury our major urban areas. I know how you feel about this, huh? And revitalize our housing and construction industry. We will also address the need for the urgent implementation of the policies for the green economy and for the development of alternative energy, which were first set out in my budget of 2007 and for which the Stockton received an international award. Today, I focus on two special issues which must be pursued because of the strategic importance to the future growth and development of this country. I speak first about building an economy for the young. A fundamental aspect of any future transformation of the Barbados economy must entail the deliberate design of an economic system that can specifically accommodate the aspirations of our youth. By this I mean, that we just cannot design an economy and hope that young people will fit into it. Rather, we must deliberately design our economic policies and structures with young people in mind and allow more of our growth, development, and the earning of foreign exchange to come from occupations that young people want to pursue and from which those young people themselves can make lucrative Careers. The potential benefits that can come from such a developmental approach is massive because Barbados has barely scrapped the surface in tapping into the vast market areas in which the services of young people are greatly in demand and where the effect extraordinary exists. I think immediately of the international professional sports market the field of entertainment and cultural activities, and the vast range of service activities that draw upon the creative imagination of our youth. The time is especially right for more young Barbadians to be quick to tap into the international sports market as professionals, especially in relation to football. And I warn you now, and if we become a minister again, I want to be minister sports. I want to be minister sports. <laughs> Thanks to the previous Barbados and Party administration, sporting organizations are now throwing $13 million a year from the lotteries. Arrangements should be made to enable them to have access to at least $25 million to begin with so that they can give more professional contracts to that sportsmen and can support development programs to develop our young people to the stage where they can win contracts to perform as professionals in the global sports market arena. The David Thompson Football Competition honors the day. We want to advance the interest of the living. We also introduce in the Barbados the Innovation Fund. We need now to capitalize that to the extent of at least $20 million a year to begin with and to commit to expand it as necessary 
to enable young people involved in economic activities and software development, film, video, music, fashion, electronic games and appliances to have access to concessional financing to be able to enable them to follow their dreams. In 2007, we left office with a cultural industries and creative economy bill ready to be used to transform the creative landscape of Barbados. It has remained in draft for four years while our young people have languished. That legislation will and must be acted upon as a matter of urgency. The government of Barbados also needs to invest in at least three mini stadia in the north, the center, and the south of Barbados to allow professional sports to take hold in this country. In addition, the Barbados Coalition of Service Industries was formed by the previous Barbados Airpack Administration to organize our non traditional service providers, most of whom are young, and to help them to build capacity to supply the domestic market and to penetrate foreign markets as services become more open to them through trade liberalization. The budget of that organization has been ravaged by the DLP. It has been cut by the same $600,000 that the Democratic Party is giving to do a football tournament in honor of a man. We pledge to fully support the coalition of service industries and to make it one of our nation's leading economic organizations. For I say to you today, our young service providers selling their services in the new evolving global economy in ways made possible by the revolution in information technology represents the best hope for a dramatic transformation of our economy and it is an opportunity for transformation that we do not intend to miss. Secondly, for the foreseeable future, Barbara's, Barbara's growth and development must take place in an environment where policy instruments that were of decisive importance in the past, such as unique tax benefit, trade preferences, fiscal incentives, regime, will diminish in significance in the future. The next phase of Barbados' development must therefore be predicated on a strong strategic information communication technology platform that is truly world class. As far back as the year 2000, Caribbean leaders recognized the shift to knowledge-based economies are committed to accelerating the use of information and communication technology for advancing the economic and social development of our region. That's what we need to realize this sector. Our telecommunication infrastructure remains critical to Barbados' development, not just as an industry in its own right, but as a necessary pillar in the growth and development of other industries and especially our service sector. Indeed, a recent World Bank study of middle and low income countries concluded that broadband penetration can lead to an increase of 1.38% of GDP. Going forward, our national information communication technology success requires governmental leadership. This must begin with the harmonization of all ICT functions within government, within and under one ministry umbrella, rather than it is today spread across many industries. Certain fundamentals which were part of the communication reform process that began in the year 2000 must again be brought to the front burn and again given urgent attention. In this regard, we must implement number portability, pursue the enactment of data protection, as well as develop legislation that addresses cybersecurity in particular. Government must also use the provisions within the Telecommunication Act to establish policies which make 
broadband provision the minimum service standard as part of the universal service obligation of telecommunication licenses granting in Barbados. The reform agenda for the future must have at its core broadband internet access at high speed and at affordable cost across the length and the breadth of this country. This approach, comrades, is critical for stimulating productivity and innovation. It, is, it has been shown in advanced countries that broadband internet access by the wider population has improved social and economic benefits across the board. We recognize the opportunity that ICT holds for high value job creation. As one of its priorities, training a partnership with established IT institutions will be central to our future policies. Especially so, a new service and technology driven economy that especially caters to the needs of the new youth requires a new concept of an industrial park. Such industrial parks in the future are ones that must facilitate centers of excellence in ICT. As such, we will not create traditional industrial parks. We will now think in terms of cyber parks that can accommodate operations such as software development, advanced research and training facilities, that give opportunities for other foreign direct investments in areas such as animation, webcasting, and mobile application technologies, to name but a few. We continue to offer our support to other private sector business initiatives, and especially the efforts of the Barbados Entrepreneurship Foundation in seeking to facilitate the provision of free Wi-Fi across the link and the breadth of this country. But I say to you this morning, that is an even more critical task for your next time. The changes that have to be made to create conditions for strong growth, especially strong private sector growth, requires that some detailed attention be paid to devising new arrangements for our country's economic governance. And it is beyond dispute that in its efforts to generate growth in the economy, government, in addition to focusing on the macroeconomic policies, must also focus on the laws, the institutions, and the regulations that have an impact and indeed provide form and structure to daily economic activity by entities across the country. The challenge which the government faces must successfully resolve and must successfully resolve is that of acting on the one hand in the public interest while at the same time acting as a facilitator of business rather than its biggest concern. I now need to spell out to you why being dealing with business facilitation may well turn out to be the matter which decides, above all else, the future of the Barbados economy. Every year, a global competitiveness report is published. And the report for 2012-2013 ranks our Barbados as 44th in relation to its overall competitiveness among other countries. This ranking goes forth in Latin America and the Caribbean is down two points from the previous year. We are 42nd year. Of concern is the fact that inefficient government bureaucracy and the lack of access to funding were identified in the survey of the private sector as the two most problematic factors for doing business in Maryland. The negative impact of poor business facilitation has already, under the DLP, then a cruel blow to our international business sector. According to the CEO of Invest Barbados, speaking on Young the Brass Tax on Tuesday, October 25th, a year ago, during the last two to three years, 
Barbados missed out on $1 billion in investment and 2,700 job opportunities in the international business sector. This is not because of the global economy, he said. He indicated that the information was based on the records which the invest Barbados keep about discussions they have with companies which had expressed interest in Barbados. And he provided details, and which had provided details of the investment and jobs that they could provide. These investments, 2,000 jobs and $1 billion in investment, did not get off the ground for reasons which included slow responses to applications for incentives and licenses and failure by the government to amend or pass new legislation to meet the needs of the market inertia.